And now we're going to move to some of the causes of osteoarthritis of the hip. Um, uh, one of the anatomic causes is dysplasia. And uh, this is uh, question 28 from module 3. Uh, patients with hip dysplasia have a series of anatomic abnormalities. And I know you all have looked at these. And, and I think the key that I tell people is underline or think about each word in that. You tend to see shallow, and you want to go to it. And then you, then you see medialized as the second word, and you realize, no, that's not what happens. It comes laterally. It extrudes. So um, you, can, you can rule that out. You know that it's a smaller contact area. That's usually the femoral head is smaller, often with a short neck. and. Uh, that the neck shaft angle is usually increased in, in uh, dysplasia. So those are fairly easy. And then you're left with excessive femoral neck antiversion, which makes sense in a posterior greater trochanter. So um, I, I think probably most people could get that question without too, too much difficulty. Um, it's probably also important to know that dysplasia is uh, attributed in about one-third of all cases of, of uh, hip osteoarthritis. And, um, and that acetabular retroversion, which John just mentioned, is, uh, is one of the most common uh, uh, forms of dysplasia. We all know it's a spectrum. Um, I think that uh, the classifications, I'm not sure how many uh, Classifications you might expect to see on an exam for uh, dysplasia. Certainly, most uh, people are quite familiar with the Crow classification. And I imagine uh, that this would be the, the one that you might see a question from. And usually, the questions are going to come on either end. So uh, Crow 1s uh, and Crow 4s are where you're going to see most of the questions. And then the, uh, the classification below it um, is used in some uh, cases, but I don't think you'd see a question that, that uh, asks about uh, differentiating a, a type B from a type C dislocation. Um, dysplasia, John's already reviewed uh, the crossover sign and the in indicative things of, of uh, acetabular retroversion. Uh, and uh, I think it's important to know that uh, acetabular protrusio, you're usually not going to see that, or coxa profunda. You're going to see it in impingement, but not uh, in dysplasia. We've, he's reviewed the false profile view, which is an important view. And knowing how to take it, as he just went through, I think is important. And it's good to know what are the critical angles, such as less than 20 degrees in the lateral center edge angle and the anterior center edge angle, and more than 10 degrees in the tonus angle or acetabular inclination. So th this is a question uh, about a dysplasia. Uh, shows a 52-year-old woman, severe right hip pain, unresponsive. What's the most appropriate surgical procedure? As you see, she has clear uh, dysplasia with a markedly decreased uh, lateral center edge angle and increased acetabular inclination and subluxation of the femoral head and in increased extrusion. Um, and uh, she has fairly uh, in-stage changes, marked cartilage narrowing. And so that eliminates uh, most of the uh, hip preservation options, uh, particularly in a 52-year-old woman. So it's important to read the age and activity. Uh, and I think you all got this, uh, this uh, fairly easy that total hip arthroplasty uh, was indicated. So uh, knowing what the potential options are in dysplasia, I think is important. John's covered per periacetabular osteotomy, this, this time for uh, dysplasia uh, with or without femoral osteotomy. And I think the key thing to know is it has to be symptomatic dysplasia with a concentrically reduced hip, i.e., a wide abduction view reveals a congruent uh, hip joint. Um, and it has to have a reasonable joint space. So tonus grade one or two changes. Um, 
for most uh, most questions about indications. Uh, the salvage uh, salvage pelvic osteotomy, the QRA, is certainly uh, um, reserved for people that do not have congruent uh, reduction, do not yet have end stage. Uh, uh, arthritic uh, changes or have some contraindication for an arthroplasty. Hip resurfacing uh, can potentially be used for Crow 1 or 2, but not 3 or 4, uh, so it's contraindicated in that and it will be contraindicated in certain destructive lesions of the femoral head we'll get to in just a minute. And then uh, uh, total hip arthroplasty uh, reserved for um, uh, the rest of, of the patients. I think you need to know um, maybe a rough amount of what a, a PAO is, where the cuts are that it involves three, uh, that a PAO involves three osteotomies through the pubis, ilium, and ischium, whereas a Chiari osteotomy involves a cut through the ilium above uh, uh, the acetabulum to the sciatic notch with shifting of the, uh, uh, of the inferior portion uh, immediately. Um, and this obviously depends on some uh, metaplastic bone and ability to form fibrocartilage, but it's clearly a salvage uh, procedure. Um, in terms of questions you might see in total hip replacement in uh, patients with dysplasia, I think the acetabular cup is ideally placed where the center of the true acetabulum would be. Often you'll see that uh, if it's a choice between that and a high center, uh, high hip center, um, you, you have to be careful. They often try and lead you to the high, high, high hip center and there's inadequate bone stock um, and um, um, it's probably going to be a less successful result. Uh, the use of uncemented uh, cup in most uh, situations. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.